What's good to everybody? Yes, man, I'm the Kenny Kane Adventures with the legend, the man, the myth. You all know him as Cupid Dave. How are you doing today, sir? Doing well, doing yes, well. Yes, sir. We're here in Medellin, we're at my place, and it's the same place I've lived for the last five years. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Hey, you know, I'm gonna just get right to it. You know, there's a, there's a narrative when your name is mentioned, they, they want to say that you were arrested for promoting sex tourism in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, can you break that down as far as... Well, I know what people say in the deal. There is, a, to get right to it, about five years before I was arrested, the president, a woman, Laura Chinchilla, was on the side of a bunch of uh, women in the church. And you know, everybody's got, some people don't like hunting, some people don't like smoking, whatever. They were very against prostitution, but uh, human trafficking, things like this, all great causes, right? Well, to fund their organization, the organization is called Rahab, mm -hmm. they asked the Clinton Foundation to send them money. Mm -hmm. So they lived off of donations from the Clinton Foundation for five years. Mm -hmm. Then after five years, there was not one single arrest. It's a 57-page sex tourism law that was put in, never one arrest. Mm -hmm. So. Well, the foundation says, you know, you, I don't think you're doing anything. We're not going to send you any more money. Mm -hmm. Out of the blue, they get an anonymous letter. And they, that's all they would say from an anonymous person. We'll get to who that is later. Okay. Send an, an anonymous letter. And what this person did, anytime you're out there, like yourself, anybody, and you've got a blog, you've got a YouTube or something, you're going to have competitors, you're going to have people that don't like you. This guy just didn't like me. Hey. And he didn't like... Uh, me going to Costa Rica, going to Sasua, all this, and he kept thinking, you gotta be pimping these girls, you gotta be doing something like that. And it was a lot of acting, he was just a troll. Mm -hmm. So I never, I, I like, he ended up um, copying the letterheads mm -hmm. off of the ICE, Immigration, Interpol, and then making up phony letters, and then sending them to the countries that was going, saying, you got a guy who's a sexual predator, he's operating in, uh, everything from human trafficking to underage sex. Well, if you're if you're legitimate and you've got any brains, you're gonna look at this and say, they don't know who this guy is and they, most of them are just thrown away. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a, here's a place that needed money. This is our guy. This is our ticket. And you got the DA, you got the Attorney General, all these people in on this and they're saying, we gotta get this guy. We get a conviction. We're back in the Bay Area. And this is what it came down to. And I found all of this out because when I was in jail, I kept getting anonymous phone calls from a guy who was on my side, mm -hmm. and he started telling me, the attorney general, district attorney, have all been told there must be a conviction. So it, the cards were stacked against you. I didn't know a lot of this. I'm wondering what's going on and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to say to you is, by my... Um, videos and by my uh, stories that I wrote mm -hmm. that I was implying that sex was the reason you'd go to Costa Rica. And uh, well, it's funny because when I got arrested, you're at the airport, you know, you're not thinking of anything and all of a sudden you're ready to get on a plane and they came from all directions. And they had the cameras, the TV, everything. This is the way they do it in Costa Rica. Wow. So they overplay it. A cop about five foot five comes up to me and he sticks his nose and his, his finger right in my nose and he says, um, you're under arrest. He says, you know what, for, you know what for? <laughs> I said, I, I have no idea. And he goes, you came to Costa Rica for sex. And I'm like, you know, well then that led into several hours of interrogation. I was denied an attorney, denied anything. Then I was held in um, a really, really rough jail for about four days, and then he says, well, we're transferring you to prison. To prison? I haven't even talked to a judge yet. Well, the way it works in Costa Rica, and you'll see, you, you might have heard a lot of this in the Brittany Griner thing, was you're guilty till you can prove yourself innocent. So they'll take you, and they'll put you in front of a judge, and the first thing the judge says to me, because my lawyer got up, it was just, just a, you know, a, a court-appointed lawyer, and he says, my client's never committed a crime in his life. And the judge gets up and says, he's been breaking the law for 10 years. This is without even any testimony or anything. So you can start to see the cards were against him. 
and after uh, just based on some letters yeah, that someone just, yeah just sent. by something like that and they were told yeah. everything is um, it's like a skit it's a choreographed skit mm -hmm. and you go in and they're told you can find this guy guilty you're gonna do this but with me this is okay we're gonna have to have two months to investigate mm -hmm. two months so now you're in what's called preventative prison but mm -hmm. preventative prison is the big house mm -hmm. it's all the killers okay so Two months goes by, and they, we go in front of them again. Nah, we need two more months. Nah, we need two more months. So then after six months, I did have a lawyer by that time, files a habeas corpus to say, look, we, we gotta have something done here. He says, we're waiting for the findings of this computer, because they take the hard drive, they look at everything there. So after six months, the findings of the computer comes back with no criminal activity whatsoever. Now what are they gonna do? This is starting to get, right, they're, they're starting to feel to get the wrong guy. This is what it's coming down to. And so now they say they want to go to trial. Mm -hmm. and, the, and I was offered a plea deal. If you come in here, you plead guilty, we're going to let you out because the crime I'm being charged with is called insinuating or implying that the country's a destination for prostitution. Mm -hmm. That's what they were finally come out. They didn't, they didn't charge me until after 400 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go in front of them and you're going to plead guilty and you're going to just go home. No, they wouldn't. Uh, the DA said, no, we're not going to do that. We'll offer them 12 years. The, wow. This sentence only to wow. a six year sentence. So <laughs> this, is what you, this is what you're up against and you can see what's going on. And I was in one of the most brutal prisons. I've been uh, condemned by four different judges. So here's the big problem with this. The prison I was in, if you're over 60, Mm -hmm. There's a prison for people 60 and over. I was 67. Right, gotcha, gotcha. So they're going to throw this whole thing that they've uh, cooked up on a 67-year-old man, and they're going to say, we're, we're dumping this whole thing on, our, our whole case on him. Well, eventually a social worker came in and told me, you know, you're not supposed to be here, blah, blah, blah. I goes, it doesn't matter. Next week they moved me up to another prison. But I was in a prison, the population of the prison, was 600. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the capacity. Capacity was 600. We had 1,380. So, so you stopped. Imagine, yeah. I, so what, I so now that. the 60 and over prison had a capacity of 173, and it was 130 in there. So you could see what they were doing. They were pushing you as far as they could, trying to get as much out of you as they could. And one time my lawyer says, "Hey, look, you've got nothing here." There's no evidence of anything. You went through his computer. You went through everything. She says, oh, we just don't like this guy. We don't like what he stands for. And he's an example. So Please. she says, I'd like to keep him for a year. Wow. And so anyway, man, what evidence man. they had, and here's the classic what I get arrested on. When I came, I always said, hey, I'm going to be in town on August 1st. I'm going to stay down at the Freebird. I can meet you guys. I, I never hid anything. I used my own name. I said, I was staying, everything. They assigned a, a undercover agent to follow me for 10 days <laughs> with a camera. Wow. And so what does he come up with? He's got a picture of me going into Zona 2. Got a picture of me going into the Del Rey. He's got a picture of me going into where I stayed, the Freebird. Mm -hmm. This was their evidence. Then there was a picture on my face because I'd always go to you know, a barber shop, a hotel, anything, and promote the place for them. Just tell them, hey, look, I'll put you on there. I'll say, you got this new hotel here, you got this or that. A friend of mine had opened up an hourly hotel. I went in there and I took pictures of the room. And my friend had a girl, they had just come from the beach. She said, hey, tell the girl to go stand by the bed and go like this. So she does that. Nice picture, no pornographic. She's got all her clothes on, all this stuff. They claimed that in the far corner of the picture, in the corner of the bed, was a condom. Oh my God! And when we researched, it was a yeah, mint. It was a mint. It was a mint. Right. Did. This was their evidence. This is what they were holding. And this on. is for 400 and some days. 400 and some days is all they could come up with. And the other part was, there was one of the um, massage parlors, we'll call them. Mm -hmm. He was working with uh, Backpage, right? Mm -hmm. And he wanted to get pictures of all his girls. And I was a photographer, had a good camera and everything. He said, you take pictures of all the girls from me. I'll send four or five at a time. But I don't want no pornography, no frontal nudity, nothing. And you take as many as you want. And then you turn them over to me. And I'm going to have the girls pick out the pictures they want. It's like promoting for, for them. Mm -hmm. they, they want these pictures taken. And what do you do when you're done with them? 
you delete them, they go to your hard drive. Mm -hmm. But when they open up your hard drive, you got rows and rows of these pictures. But none of them are pornography, no, none of them nudity, nothing like that. The one thing I found out too is, if you take a photo and put it on Facebook, if that photo was consensual, and it isn't pornography, and you're not making money off of it, it's your photo. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything wrong. So all of that throws everything out the window. All this photo, everything that I ever took was consensual. Mm -hmm. And I had, I worked for two other guys that put together my sites and everything, so they, they proofread everything I ever did. Like if I went and told a story about my weekend or whatever, they'd spice it up a little bit, embellish a little bit, but kept it down to, we don't say the word uh, prostitution, and we never talk about money. It's the key. Mm -hmm. So now there comes a the big question. Are, are you promoting this, or are you informing? So if I tell somebody, I went down to the Delray the other night, it wasn't uh, very busy or whatever, are you promoting the Delray or are you just informing people? You're informing people. And that's where a lot of this come in. So things are starting to fall apart on these guys, and they had hired a private investigator. And the private investigator was in charge of um, human trafficking and stuff like that. And he's looking at this after about one time going, this is a waste this of my time. And he would sit there at the table and roll his eyes and maybe he, I don't know, I don't know. And so you could see everything was starting to fall apart on these guys, but they kept holding and holding them. So finally, you have what they call a trial. Mm -hmm. This is where a misconception come in. You go in front of three people, they're, they're magistrates, they're not judges, because your lawyers keep telling you, don't worry about what they say, they're not real judges. Yeah, but they're making the decision. So you got three women, they're magistrates. They listen to my story, but they badger you worse than what the attorneys would, you know. So they're at, you know, calling you names, everything like that. You're like, wow. And, and then plus you're going through an interpreter, so you're never going to get your point across. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is they come, the prosecutor comes up to you, want to give them 15 years. 15 years? <laughs> yeah, five for cubadave.com, five for cubadave in Costa Rica, and five because he knows a guy that owns Monger Network. What? Yeah, he That's posted. Wild. Yeah, so that this is, is where I'm at. And, and finally, you know, you go down in the cell. You're 67 years old. You're waiting for the decision and saying these people are sadistic people. They have no regard for life. They're very uneducated, unprofessional, and they're going to try to hand you 15 years. Well, they yeah. finally come back. They got to get a guilty sentence. So they says guilty, and it's a recommended sentence. I was never sentenced. Recommend five years. Mm -hmm. okay, what's your next step in Costa Rica? you go to what's called criminology. Mm -hmm. Criminology is kind of like a parole board. Mm -hmm. Usually what they'll do is they'll knock one year off right at the start. Okay, and I've already been in there a year. Every year you're in preventative prison counts as two years. Mm -hmm. So now I've been in two years, you only have to spend one third of your sentence, and if the sentence is five years, I already spent the one third. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're headed. And uh, so I go, I'm gonna go to criminology, and all of a sudden my lawyer comes up and he goes, no. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do this. He said we're gonna appeal their decision. Mm -hmm. So he appeals the decision. I, now I got to remember. I'm another three, four months. Goes to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court throws the case up. They annulled everything. Well, see, that Costa Rica has no double jeopardy. What are they gonna do now? I mean, they're see. And I'll tell you this part of it right now that a lot of people don't understand is, for every day that you spend in prison, illegally or wrongfully. You're supposed to be paid three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. This is why I had seven different teams of lawyers visit me in the prison. I'll take the case. I'll do this. Everything. Fortunately, through a visitor day of a friend of mine, I met a guy named Diego. And Diego, when he was when he was a little boy, visited his mother who was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I was at the time. And he became a huge Vikings fan. Okay. So Diego, out of the blue, the number one criminal attorney in all of Costa Rica, says can't have a Vikings fan in our, in our jail, and he takes the case. And that's when things turned around.